learned a lot about shapes and identifying shapes and that kind of thing. And in order to go on to further things in geometry later, you know, when you're in big bag fourth graders, we're going to have to learn about something called perimeter. Have you guys ever heard that word before? It's kind of long. No? Okay, well, we're going to read the story Spaghetti and Meatballs for All, which will kind of introduce you to perimeter, and then we'll talk about what it is after the story's over. The comforts called their oh, to the wrong page. Here we go. One fine day, Mrs. Comfort was busy tending the lettuce patch in her garden. You know, it's been a long time since we've seen the family, she said to her husband. You're right, answered Mr. Comfort. He was stretched out on a bench doing what he liked to do best in a vegetable garden, reading a cookbook. Maybe it's time for a family reunion, Mrs. Comfort said. A wonderful idea, Mr. Comfort agreed. Hmm, let's see. Uh, menus, menus, menus. Dinners for two, serves four to six, banquets. How many people would we be having, he asked. Have you guys had a family reunion before? Mm -hmm. Where all your cousins and aunts and uncles come? They're usually really big, aren't they? Yeah, a lot. All right, the Comforts called all their children. They called their parents. Mrs. Comfort called her brother. Mr. Comfort called their next door neighbors, who were almost like family. Everyone would come. That's 32 people all together, including us, Mr. Comfort said. What could possibly fit in our oven that would feed 32 people, he wondered. Why not make your famous spaghetti and meatballs, asked Mrs. Comfort. Now what about renting some tables and chairs, she asked. She got out her telephone book. It's going to be a lot of people to seat, probably. You can't fit 32 people at your dinner table, can you? <laughs> Two weeks later, the big day arrived. Mr. Comfort got up very early and spent all morning cooking. He baked 16 loaves of garlic bread and made 8 pounds of fresh pasta. He simmered eight quarts of spaghetti sauce and rolled out 96 meatballs. Mrs. Comfort picked up her ripe tomatoes, cucumbers, and lettuce for the salad. While Mrs. Comfort waited for the tables and chairs she had rented, she drew up a seating plan. Then she got out the dishes, the silverware, the glasses, the tablecloths, and some vases. But when the rental company arrived, they were one chair short. Don't worry, said Mr. Comfort, we'll think of something. And so you can see down here, she's kind of drawn up a plan as to how everybody's gonna sit because they got just the right amount of tables so everybody has one place to sit and there's no extra spots. Do you think that might end up being a problem later in the story? What if they're being friends? Yeah, what if someone... What if someone um, doesn't come and then she has extra chairs though? That would be okay, that would be better than extra people showing up, right? Yeah. Because you wouldn't want to have to sit on the floor. I would. You would? Mm-hmm. Mrs. Comfort found a folding chair. Now the tables were ready. Each had four place settings, four chairs, and a vase with lovely cut flowers. Mr. Comfort came out of the kitchen balancing eight plates of celery and olives, one for each table. And so, do you remember in the multiplication tables that we've been talking about lately? Four times eight is how many? 30. 30, it's a little higher than 30. Do you remember, Amelia? Four times eight mm -hmm. is 32. 32, which is exactly the amount of people they have coming, right? Yeah, perfect. So it's perfect. Just after noon, the Comfort's daughter and her husband arrived with their two children. Welcome, said Mrs. Comfort. Come sit down. Let's push two tables together so you can sit with us, suggested the Comfort's daughter. But there won't be room, Mrs. Comfort said. But there is, said Mr. Comfort. There's plenty of room and plenty of garlic bread. Now, do you remember before, on her plan, she had four people sitting around each table, right? And now, if they push these two together, how many people can they fit around them? Six, but before it's eight. So now that's less, right? Yeah. So that might end up being a problem. We're going to go ahead and see. And she already was missing a chair. She already was. I think she found a folding chair, though. Oh, okay. But if she didn't, you know, maybe someone wants to sit on the ground, like Steph said. Everyone was just about to sit down when the car pulled into the driveway. Mrs. Comfort's brother and his wife, their daughter, her husband, and their twin sons all spilled out. Welcome, said Mr. Comfort. Sit down, sit down. Oh, let's push over two more tables so we can all sit together, said Mrs. Comfort's brother. The Comfort's daughter and her husband got up to help. But that won't work, said Mrs. Comfort. So they're trying to push more and more tables together. What do you guys think will happen the more tables they push together? More people will have seats. Exactly. Yeah, because they're not using all Because all of these edges here are where people could have sat. They can't sit there anymore. You're so right, Mr. Comfort said. We'll have to push two more tables together. But that won't work either, said Mrs. Comfort. You're right, said Mr. Comfort's husband's, Mr. Comfort's brother's wife. <laughs> Make way, shouted Mrs. Comfort's brother and the Comfort's son-in-law. 
They carried over a table and put them side by side. You don't understand, Mrs. Comfort sighed. My plan was, but no one heard her. Everyone was too busy. Apparently, only you guys and Mrs. Comfort realize what the problem is here. No one else, everyone else is too excited about garlic bread. <laughs> Save some of that garlic bread for me, a new arrival called. Me too, me too, me too. Three more vice voices piped in. Well, look who's here, said Mr. Comfort's brother's daughter's husband. It was the Comfort's next door neighbor with their daughter and son. Hello, hello, said Mr. Comfort. So glad to see you. Have a seat while I get more garlic bread. But there is no place for them to sit, said Mrs. Comfort. So more people keep coming and coming. We're going to see what happens. I think people might have to sit on the floor. I don't know. Don't worry, said Mrs. Comfort's brother's wife. We'll just divide these tables into groups of four. Go ahead, Mrs. Comfort said, but I'm telling you when you frap too much, said Mr. Comfort. Bread, anyone? And it looks like it's just complete chaos going on there. I know that's how all my family reunions are. <laughs> when all the tables had been rearranged, everyone sat down. See, Mom, the Comfort's daughter said it worked out just fine. Mrs. Comfort sighed. hi yeah, hi yeah, hi yeah, boomed a familiar voice. Mr. Comfort's father, mother, and their little terrier strolled in. Hello, Grandma, hello, Grandpa, the Comfort's daughter shouted. Oh, dear, said Mrs. Comfort, where are they going to sit? No problem, said Mr. and Mrs. Comfort's next door neighbor. If we just put, push all eight tables into one long line, there'll be room enough for everyone. Actually, Mrs. Comfort began to explain. Absolutely, said Mr. Comfort. He was carrying several big bowls of salad. Better move faster, this salad will be really tossed. No sooner had everyone gotten settled in than Mrs. Comfort's mother and father drove in their yellow convertible. Hello, Grammy. Hello, Gramps, the Comfort's daughter shouted. Mrs. Comfort put down her fork. Oh, dear, she said. So she's getting really worried about what everyone's going to think when they have nowhere to sit. Don't worry. We're all family, right, Gramps said. Let's just split this long line of tables in two. There will be plenty of room for us to squeeze in. But it isn't going to work because, Mrs. Comfort started to say, a bowl of salad slid into her lap. Sorry, said one of Mrs. Comfort's brother's daughter's twin sons. And if you look in the background, you see all those extra chairs, which is spaces where people can't sit. So if they can, they have to eat off their lap. I know I wouldn't want to do that. I'd make a mess eating spaghetti and meatballs as it is with a table. Mr. and Mrs. Comfort and their 18 relatives and neighbors were finally all seated. They passed the salad and the bread. They shared the celery and the olives. And then when they heard a cheery, hi everyone, most of them held onto their plates. The Comfort's son and his wife pedaled in on a bicycle for two. Their twin daughters rolled in on skates. Didn't I tell you, Mrs. Comfort said, there's not enough room. No problem, Mom, said the Comfort son. We'll just divide these two lines into tables into four pairs. Okie dokie. So what they were doing before is they were pushing all the tables together so everyone can sit there. And now they realize that that's a problem, so they're dividing them all back up. They should have just left them all the same. That's yeah. what they're going to end up doing. You think so? Mm -hmm. All right. I think in a couple pages, we'll see. Because they just divided them into two, and now they're dividing them into four. And do you remember how many there were to start with? Eight. Eight, yep. Wait, wait, you're all forgetting something, said Mrs. Comfort. We're all out of salad over here, the Comfort's daughter said. Don't put any tomatoes in mine, said the Comfort's next door neighbor's son. Is there any more garlic bread, asked Mrs. Comfort's mother. Don't play with your food, said the Comfort's son's wife. What did you say, asked Mr. Comfort? I said, Mrs. Comfort sighed. Beep, beep. A big red band parked at the curb. Out jumped Mrs. Comfort's sister with her husband and their triplets. All three triplets had brought their boyfriends, who were also triplets. <laughs> now do you see what I mean, Mrs. Comfort asked. Where are they going to sit? Well, my dear, said Mr. Comfort, I haven't served the spaghetti yet. We'll just move a few chairs around and reset a few plates, and there will be plenty of room. I give up, cried Mrs. Comfort. I know if I was her and I planned a whole party and people came in and messed around with it, I would be upset. I say we divide the four pairs of tables into eight single tables. So that's exactly what you just said, Steph. Mrs. Comfort's brother said, he and his wife moved one pair of tables apart. The triplets and their boyfriends moved the other three pairs. You see, Mr. Comfort, it all worked out. I knew you'd think of something, he said. Now, how many meatballs would you like? And all is well. And so in this book, they kind of approach the topic of perimeter by measuring around a table with people. But what's a different way that you know how to measure things? Measuring tape. A measuring tape. And what 
if you measure something with a measuring tape and you find that it's 10 something long, what would that be? Inches. Inches. What's another thing that you could use to measure? Feet. Feet. So what we're going to do now, we can't measure this table in people because that's just not very practical, is it? So we're going to measure the table around in feet and I'm going to need you guys' help. So you each get a ruler. And what's one thing that we know about rectangles that we can help make this go faster? They have two, this side's the same as that side, mm -hmm. and this side is the same as yours. So if I measure this side, am I going to have to measure that side too? No. No, because we know that they're the same. So we can just measure this side and this side, and we can find how big it is around doing that. 